Gospel according to Luke, the ninth chapter. When the, day, when, excuse me, when the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make, to make ready for him. But they did not receive him because his face was set toward Jerusalem. When his disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But that man said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, No one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated for the children's message. Bored? Or any really immature adults? Oh, well, that's why you're doing this. Okay, yeah. How's everyone doing today? Good? Have you guys ever have you, have you guys ever started something but didn't finish it? Yeah, yeah, like like a game or maybe cleaning your room, right? Maybe or some chore your parents had you do, right? Yeah, yeah. Can you guys tell us? Can you tell me some of the reasons why you didn't finish that project? Right. Okay. Emma. Didn't want to do it. Any other reason? You, you, you forget. You get distracted, right? Right. Those. That's true. All these things happen, right? Sometimes, you know, I call that the butterfly effect or the squirrel effect. You see a butterfly and you start chasing the butterfly, or the squirrel crosses your path and you get distracted, right? You lose focus on what you're doing, right? And that's, that's true. A lot of times we don't finish something because something else seems more important or more exciting than what we were doing at the time, right? right? In today's Bible story, we hear about a number of activities that weren't finished, right? Jesus was going to the village to visit the village, but then doesn't visit. His disciples wanted revenge, but Jesus didn't let them have revenge, right? An individual wanted to follow Jesus, but Jesus said that that journey would never end. And then to another, he said, follow me instead of burying your father who just died. There's a lot of stuff going on in here today, right? We hear that Jesus will visit the city of Jerusalem. So do we think anything's going to get in the way of him going to Jerusalem? Hmm? Right? He will not be stopped or distracted by towns or revenge, or students, or people's life problems. He will continue teaching, right? He'll continue teaching about God and sharing God's love wherever he goes, but he will also finish his journey. He will arrive in Jerusalem, right? In other words, we hear that Jesus is very focused. He doesn't get distracted by butterflies or squirrels. I might, right? Um, Right? And he, tell, he tells a new student, no one puts a hand to the plow and looks back to that is fit for the kingdom of God. Right? What he means by this is that he needs to keep his focus on God to get to where God is directing him. Right? 
Jesus then teaches his disciples to keep seeking God and keep seeking God's direction, right? And just like the disciples were able to learn from Jesus how to keep seeking God, right? So that we can, so we can seek God's direction as well. As we learn from Jesus on how to keep seeking God in his direction, then we'll have God's help in knowing what tasks are best for us to finish and which ones are not, just like Jesus knew in today's story. And that's the good news for today, right? Jesus helps us know what tasks to keep us on, right? You guys want to join me in prayer, right? You want to repeat after me? Dear God, thank you for Jesus. Help us to focus on his actions and teachings about you in the same way he focused on you. Thank you and amen. Okay. Have you ever talked with a salesman? Now, I'm not talking about a retail employee. I'm talking about like a real sales. Now, if you're in sales, please don't be insulted by this. You got to have fun with it. Whenever I think of a salesman, of course, that stereotypical used car salesman is the funnest. But I'm not, like I said, I'm not talking about a retail employee. I'm talking about a real professional salesman. Someone who really knows how to sell. Now one of the things that they do is they do what's called close the deal. Now that's when they're done with their sales pitch. They've, they've explained everything. Let's say you're buying a vehicle. You know, they've told you all the features. They've told you all the warranty. They've told you all the advantages of why you can't live without this vehicle. They take you on your test drive, everything. And when they're closing the deals, when they say, so why don't we think we just go in there and we start signing some papers? That's closing the deal. You see, that's their suggestion to make the deal final. Otherwise, people might never commit. They might just him haw. And so the, the salesman is actually giving a subtle push to make that commitment. You see, the scripture today is about committing to follow Jesus. Now, people have lots of excuses for not following Jesus. Now, I'm not talking about not believing in Jesus, but making the commitment to follow Jesus, to making Jesus a corner, the keystone of your life. You know, there's lots of excuses that people can come up with. I've heard a lot. I've heard some doozies. One of the, one of the excuses I've heard. I could worship God on the golf course. Or, being from Montana, I could worship God on a mountain. You know, out camping. You know what I tell them? Yes, you can. But do you? Now, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about you worshiping, actually really spending time with God. I'm not talking about when you're using the Lord's name when your ball goes into a sand trap or out in the rough. That's not the same thing. I'm talking about actually worshiping, praying, spending quality time with God. I've spent quality time with God sitting on a mountain. I remember one time out elk hunting, sitting on a lot on a ridge, looking out over this beautiful view full of snow, everything out there by myself. As far as I know, there was another person around for 100 miles, and I'm like, thank you, God. And I just sat there and spent time with God. So yes, you can do that. But do you? Another excuse people have told me, 
Oh, I don't go to church because I was treated bad in once in a church. You know what? That is unfortunate. And I've had a couple really pretty nasty experiences with Christians. So I can relate. I can understand. But you know what? I thought of an analogy. And I've always used it. If you go to a restaurant and you get lousy food, you get lousy service, do you stop going to restaurants? No. You just don't go back to that restaurant, do you? Has anybody ever refused to go to another restaurant just because they had a bad experience at a restaurant? No. So that excuse, I got treated bad at a church, and that's unfortunate. Shouldn't happen. But I still don't see it as a viable excuse. My favorite, among Lutherans, I've heard this always, among Lutherans, People, you know, about you know, it's about sharing your faith and, and pro- professing your faith. I've heard people many times tell me, "Well, people will know my faith by the way I live my life." Well, they should, yeah. But you know what? I have met some of the nicest Buddhists. I've met some incredibly kind, gentle, loving Hindus. I've even met a few really nice atheists. So if you go off of that logic, you would immediately think that, what? If you were to say, well, I, people know me by my faith, well, what are you showing them? That you're Hindu? That you're Buddhist? That you're atheist? Because that's what you're saying? What? How, how, do, we, how do we work that logic out? They're going to immediately know you're Christian? Just by looking at you? I don't know. You know, I don't get the excuses. See, my point is that if you don't want to follow Jesus, if you don't want to make him, you'll make that life commitment. Now, I'm not talking, like I said, I'm not talking about professing that, yeah, okay, I'm I'm Christian, I know there's a God, I, I believe in Jesus. I'm talking about actually following Jesus. Taking what he tells us to do Taking that to heart. Go out and make disciples of all nations. Go out and love people. Share the gospel. If you don't want to do that, that's fine. That's between you and God. But you know what? Be honest. More importantly, be honest with yourself. This is what Jesus was talking about. Verse 59. To one another, Jesus said, follow me. Or excuse me, to another, Jesus said, follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said, and let the bury, or excuse me, dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. That sounds harsh. You won't, you mean Jesus wouldn't let him go and bury his dad? The point what he was saying is, this man's dad wasn't dead. He wanted to wait until his dad died. We don't know how old his dad was. We don't know how many years his dad was going to be alive. But what he was trying, what this man that Jesus said, follow me, what he was saying was, wait a few years until my dad passes away so I can just walk away from the farmer, whatever it is, walk away from the fishing boat and I'll follow you. Basically, same, telling Jesus, would you wait until there's more convenient time for me to follow you? I think we all know what really was going to happen, right? You see, this happens again in verse 61. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say, Farewell to those at my home. Jesus said, him, one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. You see, guys, when I'm faced with a decision, I've learned, especially when it comes to money, is I don't like to make an impulse decision. 
Oftentimes I say, you know what? Let me go and think about it. When that, car, when that salesman says, well, what do you think? Why don't we close this deal? I say, let me think about it. When I see that National Enquirer magazine about a woman giving birth to a bat baby or whatever in the, in the line at the grocery store, they think, wow, you know what? I need to read that. That's why I go, you know what? No, let me think about that. And what usually happens? I don't buy it. I don't buy that vehicle. I don't buy the, the doohickey that I, I saw or was told about. And that's what Jesus is saying. If you're going to sit around and think about it, if you're going to take years to think about whether you're going to follow me, don't bother because you're going to talk yourself out of it. You see, Jesus is no used car salesman. But he does know human nature. Life offers us lots of distractions, even without having to go look for them. Now, there's no better time to commit to following Jesus than right now. Jesus wants us to put him first. There is no future in procrastination. There is no future in excuses. Our future is in our faith in the Son of God, in Jesus Christ. Following Jesus isn't hard. It isn't. You see, your life isn't over. You know, when, when, you're, when you're thinking, well, you know, you're trying to live your trying to live a life of wine, women, and song, whatever. You think, oh, you know, that's all going to be over. It's my, my life's going to be boring if I start following Jesus. No! Whatever excuse it is that you think is going to be over, well, some things might be, depending on what it is. But I'm here to tell you. I'm not here to tell you as pastor. I'm here to tell you as a human being. That your life isn't over. It's just starting to get interesting. It really is. Now life, life is hard. Life is hard on a daily basis. And it's harder when you're on your own. Jesus, Jesus is easy. Just pray with me. Dear Lord, it can be so intimidating to, to go from just believing you, but to actually commit to following you. But Lord, help us to see the benefits. Help us to see just how easy it is to make you first and foremost in our lives. Lord, give us the strength Give us the commitment to do that, the perseverance. Lord, we just lift this all up to you. We can't do it on our own. Life is too difficult by itself, and Lord, we need you. So help us to put you first. In your name we pray. Amen. Would you please join me in our hymn of the day?